I think we've done a terrific job in the area of spinal arthritis. In terms of treatment, we have new drugs. We have indications for new drugs. We have new drugs coming down the pipeline. But what's most important is to deal with how to prevent the disease, and that's where the research is going to give us the answers. The issue about early detection is going to be true because all the data seems to be that the earlier you intervene, the more long-lasting the result. The way that new imaging techniques can lead to early treatment in the treatment of axial spinal arthritis is that it can shorten the time to diagnosis. There is a delay of five, six, seven years which can be shortened to a period of months when we use these new techniques. What we're aiming to accomplish is collaboration between rheumatologists and radiologists. We want to increase that interactivity, that discussion around patients, the challenges of making a diagnosis. Rheumatologists are a little less likely to have the technological expertise for working with images in the hospital environment. Our objective is to really give them the confidence to talk in an informed manner with the radiologist to understand the language of modern imaging. It's one of the crucial objectives of the workshop. There should be a collaborative discussion of the MRI and the workshop does provide the language that is needed for rheumatologists to have a very sensible and productive discussion about any abnormalities found on MRI imaging. Our international MRI course is unique because of the interactive experience that is offered to participants on a workshop style format. We give participants the option to learn to evaluate an MRI image, how to optimize an MRI image, and to speak and interact with some of the world's leading authorities in musculoskeletal imaging as it relates to the field of spondylitis. They offer us the opinions of many experts uh, on this particular field so that we are sure that what we are seeing has certain degree of reliability. All this particular data and knowledge will not be able to be obtained just by reading a textbook or paper. I think without this conference, most of us will not be able to arrive at this stage of knowledge. We have our real-time interactive feedback session which allows the entire group to understand and reinforce all the learning lessons. We provide DICOM-based cases and physicians evaluate these images and then we ask specific questions and in particular we immediately see the responses. So there is immediate interactive feedback around that case. That's what makes this course so unique. I think one of the really important points that this conference really emphasized was the differing points of the early changes in spondyloarthritis and how we can sort of use those differing points so that we don't make a mistake and call something spondyloarthritis that really is some other diseases. The last part of the conference really emphasized all of those points. I just feel that I learned a great deal from all parts of this conference. It was well organized. We would not have been able to do this without the dedication, the commitment, the energy, and the foresight of the Spondylitis Association of America. The SAA really understood that this was an essential need for rheumatologists and radiologists, and of course, most importantly, for the patients whose interests they serve. <laughs>